Yes, we have launched this um, takeover bit this morning to create a leading motion technology company. And this motion -like technology company will have four focused pure play divisions, as we call this. One of them is e-mobility. And on the e-mobility side, as you said, it's obvious that the two companies fit very well together. They have complementary technologies, complementary strengths, and together we will form a division that will clearly be the market leader in automotive supply for e-mobility uh, technology. But on top of this, we'll, we will um, combine the companies in a way that three other divisions will be formed. One is the classical conventional powertrain with our growing chassis business. The second will be an aftermarket division where we combine the Scheffler activities plus the Vitesco activities, also a big step forward. And then last but not least, we're going to put together our industrial division that is predominantly bearings, but also industrial solutions with our automotive bearing business. And that will form a large player in bearings that has the potential, that has the ambition to become the largest bearing and industrial so solutions company worldwide. Carl, it's, it's, it's a fascinating deal, not least because I'm looking at the commentary from Gorg Scheffler as well, who's talking about giving up the voting rights, which is an extraordinary situation, uh, but they think it's better, best for the, the, the company going forward. But, but in terms of the rationale behind this deal, I, I hear what you're saying about the combination and, and in a whole host of areas from bearings to EV to motion, absolutely fascinating the opportunities. But is this move being done as a defence against other fast moving players or actually um, it, do you find that this is pro-action and actually the competition isn't necessarily a problem at the moment? Now, let me first comment on what you said on the transaction structure. This is a three step transaction structure that will certainly lead to a merger, finally, where Vitesco is merged into Scheffler AG. The prerequisite for that is that family Scheffler has decided to convert the non-voting common shares into common shares. That is a very decisive uh, step that enables this transaction. And this is done with the conviction that the new share that will be listed then for the merged company should have higher liquidity, should have voting rights, and should be an attractive um, investment, both for the Vitesco and the Scheffler AG shareholders. So we'll form something that is also, in that sense, a transformational um, step. Is this a defensive move? No, this is an offensive move. We want to move forward. We want to combine strengths. And we are very convinced that this will become, not only in e-mobility, but also across the three other divisions, a preeminent player in our industry. Klaus, as you pick your way through this offer and how you've um, come up with the proposition today, can you just comment on the credit financing environment out there? Because we know it's been a hurdle for a lot of companies to embark upon M&A at this point. How are you thinking about the higher credit costs and, and how to structure the deal as a result? Well, the, the deal is fully underwritten by three leading international banks. Um, the deal also has um, been built on a non-tender commitment from the IHO holding, who holds the existing 50% or nearly 50% in Vitesco, that helps us to make this deal very financeable. Um, it is in terms of leverage already in the first year after the merger, a deal that will be leverage positive. So the combined leverage uh, that we expect after the transaction will come down and will not go up. So through that financial structure, we think it's a very solid deal and uh, we had no problems together to, to line up the banks to finance this. Klaus, just looking at some of the operations of Vitesco, you can see front and centre when it comes to charging technology. How significant do you think your, a role you, you'll have when it comes to the charging tech sector? Because we know that infrastructure is still quite key to the build out of EVs in Europe at this stage. Well, I think in e-mobility, this will be a very strong partner to the automotive industry and to our customers. If you just add up the two order books that come together here, we see something like 40 billion order book on a performer combined basis. And certainly we have not done any due diligence at the moment on this. So we need to see how that order books finally uh, looks. But it is clearly something that is unrivaled in terms of size when it comes to future growth. Um, so I'm very positive there, for sure. And um, there is the question out how much e-cars will we get in future uh, on the road. 
um, the company is technologically certainly a first-class player, but you also heard that we will keep our conventional powertrain business, and that has always been our logic to keep the things together, also to be able to finance the growth in e-mobility from the strong cash flow that we generate in conventional powertrain. Klaus, um, I asked you the, the obvious question, is this offense or defense? You were very unequivocal. This is offense. This is a, a very um, a proactive move as well. Can I ask you a little bit about the broader European auto industry at the moment and it's amidst its conversion to EV? It, it seems to me that it's in a dogfight for its life in many ways. Uh, the dual threat of the likes of Tesla and the US players uh, and indeed what we're seeing out of China with lower cost models at the moment. What is the broader outlook for the European EV space at the moment and how challenged is that? Now, let me say this. These are two players that are active globally. So from a global perspective, I think we are bringing together something that will be a strong global player. For sure, the European auto industry um, is under pressure to some extent, as we said also last when we spoke. Um, but I think that the bigger players in Europe, um, think about um, our large customers, they all see that um, going forward as um, a sign that more competition will also develop more and better solutions for customers. I'm very convinced that this move is um, a positive move for our big customers, but also at the end of the day for the end consumer.